now we want to learn how to create the date or what we call the calendar table the calendar table is that table we have in our query which we have as part of our data model that allow us it allows us to analyze our data with respect to the fields you are normally going to have in a calendar table for example you could want to know the total amount of sales within a year a month a quarter or a week it allow you to do that when you come to what we have in our reports at the moment you can see that we cannot know the information about our data with respect to those fields for example if i come here now there's nothing like month year and so on and so forth that i can use to analyze the data that i have that i can use to filter and explain this data and that is why we need the date calendar table so basically there are several methods to create the date calendar table we could use we could use power query we could use other methods for example one of those methods is to import directly from data source as a separate table the way you imported your big flat file or maybe you have your dimension and facts table already the way you imported all those ones you could also import your date or calendar table directly into power bi using power query you can do that and this is the ideal situation where the data engineer in your organization has created that calendar table for you or maybe your organization already has a calendar table that you guys always use when you need to do analysis you could connect to it directly through data flow connect straight to through whatever database where your data resides but i need to tell you that you won't always have this this is not going to be the situation every time you will always and most likely need to create the calendar table yourself you could use power query to create the date calendar table we could also use power bi by writing dax and creating what we call calculated columns in power bi to create date calendar table in this course we are going to be learning how to do it with power query and with dax how to create the date or calendar table with those two tools let's go over to power query now and learn how to do that so basically we click on transform data when we click on transform data we want to create a new query we create a new query and we call it a blank query because we are not getting any data in this in this time this is formula bar is where we are going to be doing the very first work there is a very good function in m is an m code we call it equals i mean list dot date list dot date is a function we could use and we could quickly check how does list dot date work let us just quickly go into the documentation and see how list dot date work this is how it works we can see now that this is list dot date and it tells us start as date count as number step as duration for example if i need some dates if i need, just need five dates starting from the, the 31st december of 2011 this is what i write if i copy this code and i just paste it over here we are going to see what we are going to have now we can see the, the 31st of december then the first of january of 2012 and so on and so forth so this duration is basically telling us the date so we only have we want to have a date for every day and that is what this duration tells us this is the number of dates that we have five days so if i want 365 days i can just put 365 here and we can see how the number of days have increased but this is what we want to do but in this case we only want to use dates that are within what we have in our other dates so we want dates for all years within what we have in the other dates what i'm going to do is just come to is just to edit the current code i have what am i going to do i'm going to edit this first i'm going to edit this first and i'm going to use a function that we call dates dot start of year dates the start of year and inside date of start of year i'm going to put the minimum date that i have in my in this other dates column and i'm just going to come, come here and inside this place i'm going to have what list dot mean is going to find the minimum date for me so f others and other dates and how many years do i need let us just have a quick check and see we can see we have 2011 2014 
and this is 2014 December. Let us scroll down again. 2014 December. Let us just create for five years times five. We want 365 days times five. This duration remains the same. Now we can see we are from 2011, the first January 2011, all the way down to five years time. We have this as a list. We can quickly convert it to a table now. And we just convert it directly to a table and we can call this date. And we can change the data type and call this date also. Now that we have this our date column, we can have a quick check here over here now and just scroll down. You see we have 2013 and so on and so forth. So now we can begin to create other fields that we want. For example, if I need my year column and I'm going to come to add column and date and I'm just going to click on year and boom, it's going to create, give me the year. Then I continue. I'm going to come here again. If I need the month, the month name, and I'm just going to have name of month. And if I need the month as a number, not as a text, I'm just going to have it as month number now. Good. Then if I need the quarter, I'm going to select the column for date again. I'm going to come to quarter and say quarter of year. And we can see how we can do it with a click of a button. You could also write M codes to generate some of these things. So week of year and day, we have day. Then we need the day, day name also, which is name of day. If I want this month name to be three letters, the first three letters, I want it as a short name. And I believe everybody will understand what I want when they view my reports. I can also write a code to just give me the first three of each of these months. But in order to do that, I'm just going to click on month name and I can use a custom column. If I use a custom column, I can call it month, month name with, without the space. And I'm going to say that text.start, which means I, I want it to extract something for me. And I'm going to say month name, and I want it to extract the first three letters. Good. And I click on OK. Now we have a short month and we have long month name. I'm just going to call this long month name and call this month name. And I'm going to change it data type to text good good now we need to create what we call quarter year like i want it to show me instead of one year i want it to show me q1 2011. let us do the one for q1 first then we move to q1 2011 2012 and so on and so forth we could try and use what we call column from examples and see how it's going to work over here, I'm just going to uncheck the columns I don't need as examples. I need this. I do not need this. I do not need this. Then I'm going to give it example, just few examples. Q1 2011. Then we can see, we can just have a scan through. You can see now that we've moved to another month over here. Another quarter, I mean, over here, April. And it has changed, Q2 2011. We can see it seems to work. We can do a quick check to see if it works well. We can see Q3 2011 seems to work correctly. And we have Q2 2012 seems to work correctly. Then we have to rename this column to Kotaye. And everything seems to work fine. If we need additional fields for our calendar table, we can create them later. We can leave it as it is now and rename our query and call it D calendar or dimension we can put dimension calendar and that is our code what i usually we do is to just come over here home advanced editor and take this code somewhere and just save it as a text file somewhere so that anytime i'm working on another project i can i can just copy and paste this code and just modify one or two things there and it works fine and it works fine that is one method of creating a calendar table with Power Query. You could also look online and check what some other people have done. Just copy and paste their M code into your advanced editor. And I'm going to show you that. There is a particular blog where we have someone that has done something and he has posted it online. Let us just go here and go to Devin Knight. So that's Devin Knight's blog. And we just scroll down and we copy and paste. We copy everything he has done here. We just copy it. And we paste it in our advanced editor. We come to new query, blank query, advanced editor, and we click on done. 
the good part of his work is that he, he has used parameters. So I'm going to specify the dates I want between which dates and which dates. My start date is 2011 and I want my end date to be 12, 31, 2015. Good. And we can see how it works so fast. We can see how it works so fast. And I can just rename this as calendar table. And that is just another method. But we can see in this code that we have used, he has only done for one, two, three, four, five, six, some fields. We also have some of these fields and we have additional fields. And basically, if you are using this method, you have to change the data type for everything. And that is all about that. But we are not using this. We just disable load. We disable load. And this is what we want to use. Everything looks good. We are happy. Then we do close and apply. Now our calendar table and any other thing that we've changed is going to load directly into, into Power BI. Now that is loaded, there is a step we need to do before we can check if it works. We remember that. Good, good. We need to create a relationship between our calendar table that we have now and the date table, which is the other date. We need to create a relationship. What is the danger of not doing that? Let us see. If we come to calendar here now and we come to calendar and we check on year, this is year. And we can see our year is appearing as a what? As a number. Good. Then we click on sales. We can see there is a problem there. Usually, I'm going to make my year to be a text because I'm not doing any analysis with it. I'm going to come to calendar again and I have it as text and i'm going to do close and apply and we are going to see the change that is going to happen now that it doesn't aggregate it basically any column that you leave as a whole number or as numeric it is going to appear as well it's going to be aggregated or summarized when it comes to power bi and we just check here and we can see what we have we can see what we have everything looks good but what doesn't look good is that we have same amount of sales for each of the year. And like I explained previously when we were talking about creating relationships, anytime you have something like this, the culprit is relationship. So we need to come over here and create a relationship between other dates and dates. But, and that is that about that. We have created relationship between other dates and dates. But remember when in our data, we also have what we call ship dates. We see. S H I P ship date. The question is, how do I do that? How do I resolve this situation? There are several methods to do this. One of those methods is to have two calendar tables. Another method is to create what we call an inactive relationship between ship dates and dates again. And we can see because it is inactive now, we have a dotted line. Those are two methods to work with, to work with two dates in your fact table. You have two dates in your fact table and you need to create a relationship because you want to analyze your data with respect to ship dates and with respect to other dates. You see that you create an inactive relationship or you create two calendar tables. So this is how to create inactive relationship. But instead of doing this, I'm going to delete this relationship and I'm going to go back to Power Query. And what am I going to do? I'm going to duplicate this table and I'm just going to call it calendar. I'm going to add ship to it. Good. And once this is done, I'm going to do close and apply. Now I can create a relationship between this my new calendar table for ship dates with the ship dates in my facts table. Good. Now we have another dimension table and we have our ship dates. We just create a relationship here. Good and everything looks good now everything looks good and that is that about that about creating calendar table the other method to create calendar table is to use power bi directly we come over here in power bi and we create new table create new columns if we come over here and say new table it's going to ask for what you want to create and we can call it date and we, we just use a very good function called calendar auto. There are several methods to do that, but let's just use calendar auto. And with calendar auto, we can see now that it gives us a date directly. Calendar auto basically will look at your data model and try to see that, okay, 
what is the minimum date in my data model it starts once it looks it finds the minimum date it is going to look at the start of the year of that minimum date and it looks like it looks for the maximum date and it looks for end of the year of that maximum date that is how calendar auto works works once you have this date you can begin to write m codes to generate your year your month your month name and so on and so forth for example if i want to create a month for from this what am i going to do first of all this is our date column i can just change the data type first from data type of date time to what to date good so after doing this i'm going to add new column and we just come over here new column if i want to generate what we call year i'm going to do year equals year there's a there's a function for that and i'm going to put date so that is date inside date we have a, that is date inside date and we can see now we have our year if i want to create month i'm going to add a new column again and i am going to have month then we can use what we call format and we put date date and we specify the month we have which format do we want to use m m m it means i have i want three letter month we only need one bracket and we can see that and we can begin to create more and additional columns that we want. The moment you create this table, if we come over here in the data model, you can see now that you have your table. But this is just an example for us. We necessarily do not need it, but we can just ignore it. We have a calendar table that works, and that is what we are going to be using throughout the course as we progress along.